Hello and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast all about knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, and all manner of crafty goodness. My name is Laura and I'm coming to you from high level Alberta, Canada, where I live with my boyfriend, our dog, our cat, and our rabbit. You can find me online as Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, Ravelry, my Etsy shop is of the same name, and also my YouTube channel, obviously. Um, it's been a few weeks since my last episode. I did film something last week, but I felt like at the end of it, it felt really rushed. I was trying to squeeze in too many things and I thought I would take a little bit of time, finish up a few things and just take it easy a little bit. Just, I've also decided um, I will only be showing quilt uh, projects when I'm finished them entirely. Otherwise it ends up being as my last thing that I filmed very quilt heavy. So I finished four quilt tops in the last few weeks, so it's just too much. I'll show them when I finish them. And yeah, it is a beautiful day here in northern Alberta. Um, this is, this week is supposed to have above zero degrees Celsius temperatures every day for our highs, and it's very, very exciting. Um, it's been a cold, it's been very snowy this year. So just having the sun out longer and the time change was this past weekend and it's all very, very exciting. But yeah, I'm gonna jump in. I'm wearing my twig sweater again because I love it. I wear it all the time. I will be making another one and I'll be taking better notes about what my modifications were because I had a couple of people ask about, um, about the sweater because it is written as a one size only sweater, which is weird but also some of the, the the largest chart in this sweater is 80 stitches so i can see how that would be complicated to move from one size to another but i also want to try one day to use the modifications that i used for this because i um i cast off or i, I put aside the sleeves earlier than the pattern called for so i did it um one increase earlier so you increase a lot of stitches each time you do an increase row and I did it earlier, so there weren't as many stitches for the body that um, the original pattern called for. And I feel like if I knit this with slightly thicker yarn and slightly thicker needles, I would be able to do those same modifications and end up with a sweater that was around the same amount of ease that the original sweater calls for. So I want to try that. I need to find a willing recipi recipient? recipient of said sweater. Um, I am quite, I'm a rather petite person on the upper part of my body, so it obviously would not look the way it was supposed to on me, but I will do that eventually, hopefully, because I'm going to knit myself another one, and then I want to see if those mods will help anybody else. Anyway, I'm wearing my twigs. It's beautiful. It is a bit warm, so I'm going to open a window. You might be able to hear bird sound. So I'm going to start with some finished objects. I have a few, they're all pretty small, but I will start with whatever's on the top of my pile. I actually have, ooh. I have six finished objects. Again, they're all really small though. So the first one that I have ready is a pair of socks. And this is like the first time I've finished an actual pair pair of socks in quite a while. So it's pretty exciting. So I have a pair of socks. I was knitting this as a sample for my Redwood colorway. So this is my own hand dyed yarn. This was one of the first ones that I dyed in this colorway. But, so, uh, the This is in the Redwood colorway. Hopefully you can see it properly. It is very beautiful outside today. Um, but yeah, I decided as I was making, I'm trying to finish up my languishing whips. So that does count towards the sock samples that I cast on like six at a time. So I wanted to get these done, but as I was finishing the first one, I decided that I really wanted to make my cousin Jennifer another pair of socks because it's been a while since I gave a pair to her. So I decided I was going to make these for her. So the only thing I have to do to change it for myself, for a pair of socks for myself to her, is just lengthen the foot a little bit. And I used a mini skein that I just had laying around for the heel and toe. My hair is on it because why not? 
And yeah, I knit this, um, for all my socks, I cast on 60 stitches for the cuff, do about 15 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing, decrease 2 stitches on the back of the foot, and then when I get to the heel flap, it's the same as a 56 stitch heel flap. Very simple. That is the first one. Here's a kitty. Hi, kitty. She might rattle things. Anyway. Um, the next thing is another pair of socks, and these are for a friend of mine who just had a baby. She had her daughter a few weeks ago, and I'm very excited. I was hoping it was going to be a girl. This is not my sister-in-law, who I was hoping it would be a girl, but ended up being a boy. Kind of the other way around. Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Anyway, I have never knit a pair of socks for her, so I'm really hoping these fit. But she has an occasionally, um, I, I did tell her I was going to knit her a pair of socks like two years ago and I just never got around to it. But anyway, these are knit out of an opal skein of yarn I believe that I got from, I think I got it from Rosie of Pixel Atlantis in a, a Christmas exchange a long time ago. I think, because I don't remember buying it myself. But I had this in my stash. And I decided to cast on a pair of socks for her. These are 64 stitches. And I had her foot measurements in a book from forever ago. So I just, it's very basic. I didn't do anything fancy. Just a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. Hopefully they fit her. These will be going into a gift basket box thing that I'll eventually send them when I have enough stuff to put in it. And another pair I made are these, and I don't know if I've ever really talked about these before. So my friend Rowan likes to wear, so he'll wear his socks all day, and then at the end of the day, like when he gets home, instead of taking his socks off, he'll like pull them down so that only like the first half of his foot is covered with the sock, and then he'll flap around with like the rest of it. So I've made him two pairs of these before, but I call these half mast socks. And this guy has absolutely massive feet. So <clears throat> these are designed to literally just go over like his toes and the first half of his foot. So this is in some regia that I had. I started these forever ago and it was part of the thing where I wanted to clear off my needles. And so I finished these up. So yeah, he has, I also have his measurements in, in the book that I wrote down. His feet are 12 inches long and 11.75 inches around. So these, the socks for him and his wife are the same amount of yarn. Which boggles my mind, to be perfectly honest. That's that one. Pardon me. you have to be that disruptive? The answer is yes. So my next finished object is for said baby of people who are getting those socks. And I know that the mom loves purple. So I made her, I pulled out, uh, I don't have many purple mini skeins at all. But I, pro blah, blah, I pulled out the ones I do have and I made a so faded pint size. This is the 12 month size. I think I might have done it a little bit too small, but that's okay. I haven't talked much today so my throat's really dry. But yeah, so I cast that on and it turned out super cute. So the first, the first color and the last color are both on my own hand dyed mini skeins that I've had in my stash forever. And I believe the second color here is from a Woolberry Fiber Co. advent calendar that I had from I think three years ago. And then the third color was a Pixel Atlantis mini skein that I got in an advent calendar as well. It's super cute and I really love it. It's so soft. I tried really hard to get the uh, neck hole nice and stretchy. I'm hoping it actually works. I hope so. But yeah, that's that's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. 
and it is super cute. I don't generally like, I've come to the realization now that I don't really like knitting with, um, knitting garments with superwash wool because for myself I know that I won't wear them as much. So if I'm making something for myself, I'll just knit it in a non-superwash. So that's why a lot of my favorites are Patton's Classic, the Gilead, and Ulysses from Jerome Matura. And I have some Hinterland yarn as well that I want to use soon. Because I know for myself, I just feel more comfortable wearing a non-superwash. But superwash wools are so beautiful. And actually, I say this, my next finished object, I finished this yesterday, is knit in some superwash wool. <laughs> It was some stash that I had bought from Bay Street Yarn when she announced that she wasn't going to be dyeing yarn anymore, so I quickly grabbed a few skeins of her beautiful yarn, and I only bought two skeins of one color and one contrast color, so I didn't have enough to do a full sweater. But what I did do is I made this. <sighs> Every single time I have to say what it's called, I forget. The Colette tee. So it's designed to be a t-shirt type top thing. And I made one of these last year in some, I think I used Stress Knits Yarn DK in SSDGM and Palm Lines. And that one turned out beautifully and I love it. So I made this one and I made this one in a bigger size because the other one's beautiful but it is a little bit funky around the collarbone section. This one fits perfectly. And I really like the dark color, but I just think it's so gorgeous. So I just did two stripes of each color, just alternated down the side. I didn't do any, like, helical knitting or anything. I just switched the yarns. <clears throat> and after blocking, actually, this is what it looks like. That's where I switched the yarns, and it turned out gorgeous. Actually better than I was expecting. <clears throat> Pardon me. And yeah, it's got some short row shaping. It's a pattern by Witre Designs, W-I-T-R-E. And I think it is on Ravelry. And yeah, I didn't do any color, like, I just used whatever color ball yarn I had. So eloquent today. <coughs> but yeah, I finished that yesterday because this was one of the projects that had been on my needle since last year. So it's time to finish it. It was really, really fun. And I have some leftovers. I have about 50 grams left of the darker color and then maybe 15 of the other one. And I'm gonna try and see if I can squeak out a framework bralette by Jessie Mae Designs from that. If not, I'll just smudge it together with some other yarns. <laughs> All right, my last knitted finished object is my What's it called, TD? I actually can't think of it. My tank top, Cordia, my Cordia tank top. <laughs> oh, yay, 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 yay. So I finished this um, about a week and a half ago, I'd say. I knit it out of Novita wool cotton blend. And so last time I showed it, it did have a fold over uh, hem. And since then I did have to, oh, kitty, don't climb out the window. I did in fact have to um, pick up the stitches around the middle and then cut off what I had knit already and then knit down, which is fine. I didn't mind that at all. I used up every bit of yarn that I had. And I actually have a bit of a conundrum right now because I actually don't have anything to wear this with. So it, I tried it on and it just looked weird because I don't have appropriate like shorts or anything like that because I haven't bought clothes in about two years. I've never liked buying clothes in the first place. But I did buy a sewing pattern for a pair of shorts so I'm going to see that. Um, I'm going to try that out and see how it works. I find knitting, not knitting, um, sewing my own clothes I've, I have actually my first sewing finish object here. Um, I have dabbled, but looking at sewing patterns is a bit difficult because for me, 
When it comes to standardized sizing, it's hard to figure out what size to make because according to my bust measurement, I'm a two, but according to my waist measurement, I'm a 10. And then my hip measurement can be 12 or 14. And that's on being in a pear shape. <laughs> so it's just something I'm gonna have to play with a little bit. But I have one, this is getting so long. I have one sewing finished object and that is my Ogden cami. And I don't know if I'm showing you the front or the back. I have to put in a label. I ordered some labels that say this is the back. So that'll be nice. So I used a, I think it's just a polyester blend. And I lined it with the same type of fabric. And oh goodness, the Ogden cami. If you want to try knitting, no, not knitting, sewing your own clothes and you want something that makes you feel like you can do it, it's this. It turned out so well. This is my second iteration, I will say, of this exact same print style one. Because the first one, I had accidentally sewn the lining in backwards and I didn't realize until it was so far gone that I really didn't want to have to undo it but it was super simple it came together within like two hours and it was so easy and it fits so well I ordered a uh, fabric to make four more of them because <sighs> it's beautiful it looks like you bought it it's gorgeous I love it Okay, I actually have one more finished object. Um, I'll have to insert a little video of it uh, around here somewhere because it's so big that I can't actually show it proper. But I finished a quilt. So this is a quilt that I started last year. I finished the quilt top, I think in December. It was supposed to be for a Christmas present, but um, I ended up, it was going to take too long to finish. It wouldn't get there in time because post is so slow, so it didn't matter. So we kind of pushed it to this year. And this is such a pretty quilt. I'll try to show you as much as I can. This room is kind of a mess. All right. It's got so much hair on it. My hair, cat hair, dog hair, whatever. Everybody's hair. Everybody gets included. Ta-da! Oh, there's a cat coming to inspect. Excuse me, miss. Miss, excuse me. Can I help you? Wanna sit on my lap? Is that what you want? Oh, I'm gonna stop it. What are you doing? No, excuse me. <laughs> so this quilt is called the Greenville Quilt. Um, I actually got it as a kit from Connecting Threads, which is a sister company to Knit Fix. So their prices are really, really good. And I ordered a lot of fabric from there because apparently I'm a quilter now. So I made up the quilt top and I put it together with the backing, obviously. And then I actually sent it to my mother-in-law who does long arm quilting which is super convenient to me and she does such a good job and I love the quilting that she does on this. I very rarely ask for any specific type of pattern for the quilting. She usually picks it for me and it's always perfect. So I got this back, I attached the binding and then I always hand sew the binding down because I just find that process very, very relaxing. And then I threw it in the washing machine because my brain tells me that as soon as you throw a freshly finished quilt into the washing machine, it's going to dissolve. It's the same part of my brain that tells me as soon as I put hand dyed yarn into a parcel to send someone all the colors are going to mix up and it's just going to be like sludgy yarn when you get it. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so this quilt is either going to be a Christmas present for this year or it's going to just be a birthday present for this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. When we get it to the recipient, we get it to the, to the recipient. I'm really happy with it though. Um, I'm really tempted to keep it, 
but I've told myself that if I want one, I can make another one. So that's that. Okay, I just realized that my other work in progress is in the other room. Pardon me a moment. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I kind of am in a kick right now of clearing off long lingering whips that I've had for quite a while. All of these are from last year. Um, I already drew the next, sorry, I already drew the next project from my jar of projects. So I'm, uh, the next thing I'm going to be able to cast on is the classic, cozy classic raglan by Jesse May Designs. Um, but I decided that before I start anything new, I want to clear off my old ones. So my first one is this sweater. I think it's called the Autumn League sweater it's been so long i honestly can't remember so i started this for a co-worker last year she requested it and i got this far because i literally just picked it back up again i got this far and then i stopped for some unknown reason so it's got a folded over collar and then this cute sort of crossed design which i really like and so, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know, just put it aside. <laughs> so I put it back on my needles and I'm just, I just have stock in it to do and some sleeves and then I'm done. And I'm knitting it out of the Plymouth Yarn Company Encore uh, Worsted Weight. And this is 75% acrylic, 25% wool. It is super soft. I wanted it to be machine washable for her. Um, she has children. And, but also had a little bit of wool content for that sort of don't need to clean it that often thing. Are you having fun? Okay, thanks. Cool. So yeah, I've just, this should be finished pretty soon because it's not overly complicated or anything like that. The next thing I'll be working on... <sighs> Thanks. Is the I'm gonna say this wrong and I apologize. Uh, I believe Isbray, Isbray by Skein Deer Knits. It is a beautiful pullover. It's like a loosely fitting, just drapey, beautiful color work delight. Um, I cast this on last year as well, and it's a bit funny looking at the moment because I am knitting it out of Holst Super Soft cone that I just have in this bag <laughs> and uh, nothing fancy but yeah I got past the yoke the color work took off the sleeves and then just stopped. again I just stopped which like stopped immediately after so and I'm really excited to see what this looks like after blocking because I didn't wash the yarn first so it's really crunchy with all of the spinning oil that's in it but yeah, so I got past the color work. And I'd really like to see this done because I think this is going to be one of those same sorts of things that this one is where it's just lightweight and comfortable. So it keeps you warm but doesn't overheat you. So I really want to start that again as well. And so I have put them all into bags in my office so I know now I have to work on those next. <laughs> and the last thing I want to finish is actually a fix situation. So, oh, pardon me. So I knit this cardigan for my boyfriend last year. It's the um, Cambridge jacket, which he has two full ones of because we love that pattern. And this was made, I knit it out of some really nice um, <clears throat> yarn that I bought in Nashville when we went in 2019. And I actually might have, oh, it's too far away. And now I'm caught. There we go. It's an Ella Ray classic, this 100% wool yarn. Um, but what I need to do to make this a wearable garment is I actually need to take off the sleeves, because I have full sleeves on it. Take off the sleeves, undo the shoulder, undo the side seams, and unravel the front and the back panels to about here and re knit them in stockinette instead of this ribbing that I knit them in. 
which honestly is perfectly fine. I mean, I already have the sleeves done. I'm half done already. So I just need to actually take it apart and put it back on the needles. Because I did the whole body and ribbing and then I finished it and I hated the way it looked. So that's all I need to do for that. I'm also doing just more sock samples because I'm always, I've always got a sock sample on the go. In my uh, downtime, I spend most of my time winding and warping yarn. So whatever spare time I have for that, I do a little bit of sock sample knitting, which is fun. And yeah, the only other thing I really have to talk about is um, I have a listing in the shop at the moment. It's only going to, going to be up until the end of the week um, for a pre-order for Very Vintage Christmas. So if you have been looking for that, I do have that listing in the shop. Um, it's this yarn right here. I love this color. I absolutely, I just love so yeah, I have a pre-order listing. It's turning into a sort of die to order listing because I prepped really well, so I don't, uh, you don't have to really wait for it. Um, but yeah, so I have a listing for that. I'm going to be adding Faded Rainbow to the shop next week. Um, I'm not sure what day, I don't know how long it's going to take me to do it, but I do have some spare time, so I'm going to be warping up some of that today and then dyeing it hopefully tomorrow or the day after. And because I've had a couple questions from people who have watched the Earth Tones Girl podcast episode, the latest episode, so I will have some of that in the shop as well. Um, I also wanted to talk about advent calendars for a little while. I don't, at the moment, I'm going to be starting my seasonal summer job in April, in mid-April, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'll have time to do a full advent calendar the way I've wanted to, so in with how I do it, advent calendars are the four days of advent, so the four summers, summers, the four Sundays before Christmas, and I would try to have a different self-striping skein for each of the four days, uh, four Sundays before Christmas. Um, I don't know if I'll have enough time to do all four, but I am planning at least on doing a mystery Christmas skein kit. So it'll come in different amounts. So it'll be just the yarn or the, a yarn and a bag, yarn and extra goodies and kind of stuff like that. Um, I'll have more information about that when I get to it, but I am sampling colors and I, I... snow is falling off our roof at an alarming rate. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. I'll obviously have more information when I get to the time where I can figure out how much time it's going to take. Um, but yeah, the shop is going to be a little bit slower because of me working a full-time job in the summer. So just a heads up. But yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I'm working on a couple cross stitches, but it doesn't even look like anything right now. I've literally started a new one and it's just two colors and they're both gray. So it doesn't actually look like anything. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm hoping to have a few more uh, quilts done next time. I don't know if I'm going to have much for like knitted stuff, but I'm happy with what I finished today or this time around. But anyway, I will see you all next time. I hope you are enjoying the extra light if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and all of that jazz. I'm so excited for summer. But yeah, I will see you next time and I hope you all have a wonderful few weeks. Goodbye. Thank you.